All right, here we go. Welcome back to the shop, guys. So today we have a 2004 F-150. The year doesn't matter. The model really doesn't matter. The lesson here is to always, always load test your powers and grounds whenever you have a concern like this, where you have an expensive module, a module maybe that doesn't fail too often, and you're wondering if it's actually failed or not, you wanna really make sure you load test your powers and grounds before condemning the module. So case in point here, we're gonna go through the diagnostics real quick, and then we're gonna concentrate on load testing the circuit and why it's so important, okay? It's gonna save you guys a lot of money from misdiagnosis, okay? Um, so, like I said, this has a, a vehicle security module, which is strapped to the back wall on this 04 F-150. And that module handles, like, perimeter alarm, your power door locks, both from uh, your key fobs and right here. Uh, it controls your automatic headlamps because the sun load sensor comes into it. Uh, of course, your horn for your alarm. You know, it functions like that. And guess what? All those functions all at once are gone. All right. So, of course, the very first thing I did is I checked the fuses for everything. All the fuses are good to go. Now it's time to get more invasive. We had to go ahead and pull off the back seat on here, pull back the liner, and get to the actual wires coming into the vehicle security module to see if those powers and grounds are actually making it their way, their way back here into the module so the module could actually work. If, they, if that all that current and everything that never makes it back here, this module is never going to work. I mean, it's, it's that, it's that plain and simple. So you need to make sure it has the ability, uh, the current and everything to work, all right? So before I did all this, of course, I went ahead and I did a network test on here, okay? Just to see what was going on. So I did a network test on here. And I'll do it real quick for you guys. So the idea here is to, of course, make sure all the fuses are okay. Uh, over in the junction box over there, they were all good to go. It was like three or four of them. Okay, we're good to go. So it has power getting back there, most likely, all right? So is it just part of it? You know, certain circuits that are compromised, you know, for the door locks and stuff like that, that are not able to work. Uh, is that why it's, it's not working? Or is it totally dead? You can see right here, the VCM, the IDS here, parsed the uh, module and it didn't respond back. It just ignored it, probably because it's dead, all right? So like I said, the very next step was to come back here and, of course, start testing all the powers and grounds, all right? So we're going to go through that real quick, and then we're going to jump to the most important part, which is load testing the circuits. Oh, boy, look who just showed up to work. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? <laughs> Got it all torn apart. Oh, yeah, we're going to figure this one out together. Yep. All right, so here we go. So we have our multimeter set up back here, okay? We have our pinout diagrams, well, our pinout connector. We have our pinout diagrams right here, and now we can start checking to make sure power and ground is getting back here so this module can work and do its job, all right? So here are the four powers that come into it, all right? So again, we checked all these fuses already over at the central junction box, the smart junction box, and they're okay, but it doesn't mean that power is making its way back to the module here, all right? So I already pre-checked both these grounds because they're just as important as the powers coming in, all right? Because if the grounds are not here or they're uh, corrupt in some way, they can cause a lot of erratic issues with modules that are requiring them so they can work properly, okay? So both these grounds are okay, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do when we test all these voltages and make sure they're actually making it to the connector for the module is I will actually use the actual ground that's coming in and feeding the module so I can test both sides of the circuit at the same time instead of connecting it up to, let's say, a, a body ground like that. That doesn't tell me anything. I wanna make sure that ground, that good ground, is actually getting in here. So right now I have a small paper clip that's not gonna uh, cause any problems with the connector. Okay, the pins. And I have it into pin four on here, all right? Which is the fourth one over. So pin four is right here, all right, on connector A. So that's our ground coming in, all right? So at this point, I simply need to take the other side of my multimeter on the DC voltage scale, all right? And we're simply gonna test all these other pins. 
So this one pin right here goes to B. I already tested that and it's okay. So we have three powers coming in on this particular connector, all right? So we're gonna check pins one, eight, and seven. Pretty simple, right? So let's check it out and see if the power is making its way back here. All right, hand that off. All right, here we go. So the first one I'm gonna check, I have the pinouts right here, so the far right here is pin one. We should have 12 volts or more. We're good to go. And then pin seven, right here's another one. And I'm just being very gentle with this, uh, this, this probe on here. You don't want to open up the connections on there. There we go. And make sure you have contact on there. And the last pin is pin eight on here, okay? So we're gonna check that one also. And okay. that one's also good. How come that one's only 11 volts? Exactly. Now, if you guys look at this diagram right here, you can see each one of these are coming down and they're, they're going straight to the module, all right? So this one right here, you can see it's pin eight we had the problem with. It's definitely not splicing off or going off anywhere else. So it's a direct shot from the fuse over to here. So there's no load in between. So why would this one be lower than any of the other ones? All right, let's check it again. Make sure you have good ground, good ground. Let's check it again. Let's compare it. These should all just be regular battery voltage. They should be within, you know, 0.01 of each other. Okay. And this one. But it's still above 10 volts. It should be good to get enough for the system to work, right? Not so. This pin, this circuit is compromised and there's actually corrosion on somewhere, not allowing the current to flow, enough current to flow over to the module so the module can work. So watch this. Watch how this all changes, okay? So we know the other circuits are fine and I can tell you already, the other circuits are fine. This whole point of this video is to demonstrate why load testing is so important. So important, in fact, that I'll actually a lot of times skip voltage test testing like this and go right to load testing, all right? Because I know if this circuit can run this old window motor, it's heavy, it's bulky, gear reduction. If they can run this thing, then it can run anything, especially a little semiconductor inside of here and some relays, okay? So let's concentrate on pin eight. So we're gonna get in there, all right? You guys see where I'm pin eight? 11 volts, Still, that's kind of suspect, okay, already. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a load on both that power and ground, all right? And give me a second to set this up. So we'll connect one side of my motor to it, all right? Hopefully it doesn't touch. And then the other side, where's my pin? There it is. Okay. This is how you're going to tell, okay? So when I put this load on it, yes, it will drop some voltage but it shouldn't drop out. Now watch this. I put a load on it and all of a sudden, this circuit has no low carrying capability at all. Which means when this module comes on and it, 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 put, it presents a load to that circuit, all of a sudden, it can't supply the current to it and this module will not fire up and it will not work. None of its functions will work. It will not respond on the network. It won't do anything. Because this 30 amp that's coming in Obviously, it's hot at all times. This is the main power lug coming into here that allows this thing to actually do all the work. The rest of them are switch power for different reasons, but that one, that 30 amp, that big one, is for it to work. Handle all the functions inside of here, all right? So, just for comparison, again, this is why I just do load tests and begin with from the circuit, from the get-go, without even a multimeter. But this is a good way to confirm what's going on here. So it was a pin one, right? Pin one, we looks like it's fine. Let's load test that too. So I'll clip it onto there. See, you're pulling some amperage. It can supply the amperage. We drop, but not that much, and our motor's working just fine, running at full speed. Can you see it over there? Yeah. So that right there tells me we have an issue 
with the main circuit, okay? What's nice about this one, like I said, is that it's a straight shot. There you go. So the 30 amp is a straight shot from the central junction box all the way back. So what do you do next once you find something like this? Well, let's go over to the central junction box and take a look. Okay, so in a situation like this where we know the main power lug is not making its way back to the module in the back wall there, what do you do in this situation? How do you isolate what the problem is? The very first thing that I do in a situation like this because smart junction boxes that are tucked down by the front kick panel here, well, they get a lot of water leak issues over the years, different models from the A-pillar here, all right? So in order to verify our power coming out of the smart junction box is not compromised, I'll tap into it directly right here, all right? So on this one, it's down here and behind here. So I'll go ahead and disconnect that and I'll show you what to do next. And then we're gonna show you a quick tip on isolating where the actual problem is in the circuit, where the uh, loss of current is from the corroded wires. Okay, so what I do to see if the power coming out of the smart junction box is compromised or not, is I'll simply bypass it, okay? So the connector for uh, this, on the smart junction box side here, uh, for that circuit, the pin eight there looks just like that. So I had to find it on the back side here, right down here. And you can see right there, the light green and yellow stripe. That's our circuit. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect it from the box, right? And I'll simply inject my own power through a fuse on here, directly from the battery, okay? Through my jumper leads. So I'll put fuse power through there directly back to the connector back there. And we'll do the same test. So initially we'll look at it. Still the same problem, 11.43 volts. Should be 12.2 like the rest of the circuits. Now go ahead and connect the load up on there. Nothing. It's not spinning. Take it off. On. It does the same exact thing. So we know, it's we, we literally know based on this quick test that the problem lies between here and here. It's the wire somewhere in here. Okay, here's the other trick though, okay? So we don't need that anymore. We can get rid of that. Goodbye. And we can reconnect this. So I'll reconnect this up and then I'll show you another trick to isolating where in the wire chase the issue is. Okay, cool. So we know it's in the circuit. We know there's still an issue. It's nowhere near 12.2, 12.4, like the rest of the circuits on there. Now, how do you isolate it, okay? So basically, this harness, this power is coming out of this smart junction box here. And you can see it coming out there. And it goes down to this chase right here. And a lot of times, they'll come out underneath the seats here cross over and go to the other side. So of course, you can pull up the sill plates here and start looking. A lot of these are pretty well protected from chafes and corrosion, as you can see here. Um, and like I said, there can be water leaks right here from the A pillar. So I did look on the backside of the connectors uh, to see if there's any kind of corrosion, anything like that, and they were perfectly fine. Uh, because like I said, in, internal inside connectors on vehicles, like this right here, there's, there's nothing sealing them up on the backside like you see uh, uh, on connectors under the hood or under the body, all right? So they're not meant to see water. So they're not protected from it. So anything that comes in, it's going to corrode and cause issues. Whereas the ones under the hood are sealed and you generally never see an issue, all right? So we're good to go on the backside there. The wires coming out look beautiful and they come down and they meet this big chase here and they come down. So the very first thing that I'm looking at right here before it gets to the plastic chase and crosses the vehicle and goes over, as you see the corrosion here from water over the years, different things. I mean, it's an old four, how old is this thing? 17, 18 years old by now. So you see here's some water that came down eventually. You can see how the vent right here and stuff like that, a little bit of ground corrosion. Uh, but the wires right here are exposed. Why they do this, I don't know. So a lot of times they won't be tightly wrapped like this, all beautiful the whole length, and they definitely won't go in a chase like this the whole length. A lot of times they get bunched up like this and they just do a quick wrap and they sit there and they rub against uh, the body. 
Well, I could rub against the body for 20 years and it wouldn't have an issue because the insulation is quite good, all that stuff. The body's nice, smooth, and painted. But then you get a situation like this. We have rock coming down and it gets rough like this and it's rubbing. Guess what's going to happen? Yeah. So a really good way to do this is to simply go down here and poke, squeeze, move a little bit, and then watch it over here. All right. So I'm going to try to do it. I'll show you guys how it looks. So we'll do it right here. And I'm going to just touch that one little section right there. So you can see the voltage is nice and stable otherwise, right? It's pretty darn stable. Never really moves. So I can touch over here. Hear me touching, poking, wiggling, nothing. But then I get it over here, okay, where it's suspect already, and watch. Poke. 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 You see? Now down to 11. Look what I'm pushing on right here. Where it's chafing and corroding on there. So again, this little wiggle test, poke test, can also help you isolate so you're not tearing up the whole interior trying to find it underneath here. Now, if you're in a situation like this where the customer wants his vehicle back, everything else is done on it, and we know these modules, let's say, are on intergalactic national back order, and you want to know if it's okay otherwise beside that one circuit, what you can do is simply cut that circuit. You see it right here. This is the one circuit that had an issue, not providing enough current for the module to work. Otherwise, everything's connected, stock, factory, original, all right? So what I do in that situation to make sure everything's okay with it, there's not any further issues, is I will actually take fuse power direct from the battery, and I will cut the wire like that, all right? And I will apply power to it. Just to that one lug on there that we know is having an issue getting power to it. Everything else is stock, all right? So th what this will tell me is that if we find that wire is corroded, chafed, coming apart in the harness, we fix it and restore the proper power, voltage, and amperage to this circuit for the module, will the module work the same as if we are doing now by bypassing it, all right? So let's go ahead and try it out. So the first thing we're going to try out is the electronic door locks. They work great. All right. So let's check the key fob. Where's it at? Pocket. Controls all that. Controls that. Okay. And the other important part of it is the sun load sensor. All right. So what you'll notice when this module fails, and it fails often enough, is that your lights will work just fine, all right? But then you go to put it over an auto lamp and the lights never come on, all right? So we have a rag over the sun load sensor to force it to go into auto lamp mode, to turn them on, and sure enough, it's turning them on. Before it would just be unresponsive. So all the functions are restored now. And of course, the final test on here, key on, is to do another network test and of course a self-test but this will kind of do the same thing so right now you can see it's failed on there yeah our key is on i believe so our last test it failed and now we have power going to it you know from that wire back there and it's functional now otherwise let's see if it talks to the scan tool and shows it's okay so right there, our VSM is now passing. Everything is A-OK. -okay. okay, so for curiosity's sake, and just not to leave you guys in the dark, um, I'll open up this harness here real quick, okay? So again, I was squeezing here earlier and the voltage was fluctuating big time. So you pull it apart, you pull it away, and you can see it's all rotted from water leaks over the years. I mean, this vehicle, like I said, is very old. And then of course, which one of the wires is on the outside of the loom? This wire, the light green and yellow. All right, so we can see, like I said, it was rubbing. There we go. It can rub against smooth paint 20 years and be just fine. But once it starts getting rough, 
uh, it's gonna start wearing into it, cause pinholes, water gets into there. So right here, you can see it looks in pretty rough shape, looks distorted almost, all right? The best test for this, besides cutting it right there and seeing if it's powder in there, is I'll actually start pulling on it. Look at that. Right there, it's the easiest way. It's suspect, you want to yank on it. Why? Because when it's when there's actual copper in here and not just the outer insulation jacket, like let's say this one right here, okay, it's fine. I could hang off a side of a building on this thing and it wouldn't break. That's how strong it is. So me using one little finger here underneath here and putting pressure on it made it pop and you saw all the powder come out. Right there, nice and easy and cheaper for this customer. Uh, we found our break right here from corrosion, from it rubbing and all that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is of course patch in some new wire on here and then I'm gonna wrap stuff really good on here. Even put some convolute on here, protect it uh, because this rust, it's not going anywhere. I mean, it's just an older vehicle. So what you wanna do is protect it the best you can. So the rest of these circuits aren't compromised in the future. And of course you don't want the same one compromised in the future. But that's how important it is to find the actual issue and draw test, load test a circuit is because a lot of time modules are okay and you're going and swapping three, $500, PCMs are a thousand right now and it's not gonna be the issue. It's gonna be a little wire that costs you 30 cents to fix. Okay, now that we're all fixed, I had to cut back, you know, a couple inches. You wanna to get to some good copper on each side, reconnect it, butt spliced it. Uh, with a double wall uh, insulation on there so it seals it up real nice and like I said I put some convolute on this side where it's going to rub on the uh, the rotted body right there and I even put it over there uh, where it can rub on the body also so it's all protected the way it probably should have been from the factory came all the way back to here with the tape laid it back in the channel and we're good to go for many many years and yes I went ahead and cleaned up the ground on there why not and uh, put some protective grease on there so that's good to go, that's for different circuits, but why not? We're here, right? Do it right. Back together, and... Everything, everything works once again. And it was just a little section of wire. And we found it because we did a load test. You see how important that is? Yep. You could easily misdiagnose a $500, $700, $1,000 module Plus install and everything else, waiting a month, thing sits here, and it doesn't fix it. Guess what? We pinpointed it, and it's good to go for some labor. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.